The journey toward our higher selves continues with conversations in the Indigo Tent. Join us on the adventure. Hi, Wendy. Welcome to the tent. We're, I'm excited. We have a guest today. Hey, Zella. I'm excited, too, I'm for our guest and another ex wonderful conversation. Yeah. So tell us about Sophie. So a dear friend of mine, Sophie Sedai, I met a few years ago in the family constellation realm. And uh, we just had one of those kinships, you know, a, a soul sister from another mister. <laughs> and uh, so we've had the chance to, to get to know each other and some of the work that Sophie does. And uh, along with the constellation work, there's a systemic work. She does lymphatic drainage, which is something else I've been doing and having a lot of benefit from. Not as a massage, but it's a machine. And so without further ado, welcome, Sophie. Welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm very, very honored to be here to join your podcast and awesome. to be in the tent. <laughs> and I, so just because I know I, I can't say it, ever say it right, but what is the name of the, the machine or the process that does the lymphatic drainage? Um, so, uh, the name of it's, it's a called the assisted lymphatic treatment. It's with the XP two machine and it works with light sound frequencies and the noble gases. And what it does is it works like a sonar and pings the deep lymphatic nodes way inside the body near the organs where the manual lymphatic massage just gets the lymphatic fluids moving the machine actually gives it direction. And so it assists the body to release the toxins um, and flush them out. So there's a protocol of how it goes through the body and out through the circulatory system. And the thing about toxins is, is that there's many different types of toxins and we have uh, physical toxins, environmental toxins, but we also have emotional toxins. And the reason that I got into doing the lymphatic treatments was an extension of the constellations and systemic work because we're removing the spiritual imprint, but we're assisting the body to also release the emotional imprint that's there and get it out of the body. So we're doing like a, a spirit, mind, body cleansing. So we get a realization of what the trauma or what the emotion or what our body is feeling. And then we assist the body to release it so that we can clear it out of our, um, out of our systems, all the systems, right? So it's, it's a, um, an extension of the systemic work. It yes. sounds like, it sounds like intense house cleaning. <laughs> yes, yes. And that's actually why I got into it um, for myself. So it's, it really um, assists because, you know, there are a lot of like, um, when we have that fright or flight or any emotion, we create, you know, uh, cortisol, adrenaline, dopamine. So we need to assist the body. So like, we can think clearly and work from a place of, of uh, balance instead of emotional reactions to crisis, like, you know, putting out fires all the time, because that is very tax, uh, taxing on the body and the mind as well. And also on, you know, our daily life. So this is an, an additional tool from the medical side to assist the mind to really clear itself so we can, you know, start to work optimally instead of crisis management all the time. Which yeah. is really important because we tend, um, as, as modern day people, we tend to live in, in fight or flight or then in rest and digest. And right. what we really need is a balance between the two. Right, exactly. And, mm -hmm. and, I, and I think it's like the Pavlov theory, you know, with the dogs, it's like, you know, this and then you get a shock. So you have to train your body and your mind um, 
so that you can find that that peace and mindfulness is one of those tools that you know has come out into mainstream um but i think that people don't really take into account how important the body functions are like we okay we're gonna we're gonna drink celery juice and we're gonna eat carriages and we're gonna like be gluten free but we're just masking the symptoms and we're not getting to the root cause right so so um starting sometimes i can get people on the table and then we start you know the body tells me where there's issues and then we talk about it but what's really incredible is as we're talking the body becomes sticky again and shows that it's releasing so it the body's saying yes thank you thank you for showing me this so i can let it go finally and then the people start to feel better so they can understand that you know a breakout on the face is a symptom it's only a symptom it's not the root right or or you know um a sinus or post nasal drip that's a symptom but how long has it taken the body to show us that symptom how long has it been you know digested in the body right and and coming and then it finally comes out and those chronic illnesses are showing us how long right so it it helps people to start to see that there's more to life than just trying to heal the body and how important that is yes and i know for myself having done several treatments it does make a huge difference um the most recent one i could tell i was feeling in you know i had some inflammation from traveling and eating differently uh, while I was out and after that first treatment it was all of a sudden it was like all the the extra bloating was just gone and not just in my body but also in my brain so yeah I love it and then this is what uh, I think in the evolution as is what has brought you back into something that you've been developing uh, called taking your place or take your place Uh, and we wanted to do a little bit of a flip-flop we're starting off with moments with your higher self in a beautiful meditation that Sophie does at the beginning of all of her sessions and so Sophie could we invite you to share that meditation with us sure So I'm going to give the directions first and then we're actually going to do it. Um, So just listen and feel in your body. So we're gonna take four deep breaths and we're gonna take it in through our nose and out through our mouth. So we're actually getting a lot of oxygen to our brain. So it's gonna be something like, so you're really taking it in, but you're also like really letting it out. And so the first breath, that we're going to take, we're going to visualize ourselves, and we're going to breathe in all of ourselves. Then we're going to see our mother in front of us, and we're not going to see our mother with any emotion or baggage, but just the woman who gave us life. And we're going to breathe all of her in, and then we're going to see her step behind us on the left, behind us, closest to our heart. And we're going to do the same with our father, whether we knew him or not. We're just going to breathe in through our nose and out through our mouth and see the person who gave us life. Now, if you're adopted or if someone else raised you, like your grandparents, you're going to breathe them in. So you're going to breathe in, if you're adopted, two mothers and two fathers. And then you're just going to breathe it in. So you're not going to even visualize them if you didn't know them, but you're just going to feel like another energy standing there. After the father steps in behind the right, behind us and back of us on the right, we're going to feel all of our ancestors. We're going to go back as far as we can, maybe seven generations, 254 people standing in, taking their place behind us, all the women on the left, all the men on the right. And we're just going to feel them as we breathe, step in one by one into their place. 
And then we're just gonna breathe all of that in and we're gonna rest for a moment. And then we're gonna feel all of the excluded ones, all of the people that were excluded in our family, the ones we know and the ones that we don't know, excluded for any reason, like, um, you know, they were alcoholic, mental illness, the abandonment, whatever it is, we just visualize excluded ones. And then we bring in also all of those that affected our family, like victim and perpetrator energy. So all of those that affected our family for whatever reason, uh, land, they took fortunes, land, whatever. And then we're also going to bring in all of those that our family has affected for all those same reasons, for whatever the reason. And we're just gonna feel everyone take their place because what we have to really embrace is the fact that thousands and thousands of meetings had to take place for everyone to meet at that specific time, at that specific moment, for whatever reason, right? To create life and pass life through them so we could be here today. And I think that we lose the contact of the awesomeness of what it took for us to be here. I think that sometimes we take for granted that we're here and we may complain about our life or we may see bad things or good things, but we are a product of so many encounters that if one of those encounters had not taken place and life had not passed through those people, we wouldn't be here today. So there wouldn't be anything for us to feel bad about or, um, sad about or happy about we wouldn't be here and we wouldn't pass life on through us and when we talk about in a constellation's point of view passing life on that for us if we don't have children it's our projects it's our animals even our plants our fish things that we love that's how we pass life on in many different forms so it's not just by having children and creating another generation. We create projects and those become our babies and we nurture them. Our dogs, our cats, our animals, our pets, right? Our birds become lost children that we are nurturing. The opportunity to raise something, to nurture something. So we need to remember how all of that comes into us and that we're all a part of so much more than what we see on a Zoom screen or in the mirror or what other people see of us. Okay. That was beautiful. Thank you. So taking in all of that awesomeness of who we are, we're gonna take in that first breath. First of all, let me step back a second and let me just get everyone to feel comfortable in their chair. Just take some regular breaths so that you can really be comfortable in your chair and feel your body in your chair and sit up as straight as you can. If you're not in a chair, do your best to just sit up straight. It's best to have your feet touching the ground if you can, but that's up to you at this moment. So you just wanna sit as with your back as straight as possible. And now you're gonna see all of you, and you're going to breathe in all of you. And now you're going to see your mother, and you're going to breathe in all of your mother. And remember, no emotion, no baggage, just the woman who's standing in front of you. And if you're adopted or someone else raised you, you're going to have that woman standing there too. And if you don't know, you just have like a little shadow. Breathe in. And the same for your father, just the person who gave you life, no baggage, no emotion. And if there's another father that you know or don't know or someone else raised you, have them there or just the shadow and just breathe it all in. And now you're going to start to feel all your ancestors taking their place one by one, stepping in. 
all the women on the left, all the men on the right, taking their places, and we're going to breathe all of that in. And now you're just going to sit there for a moment and start to feel all of that energy, all of that support, all of those resources of the ancestors that overcame obstacles. How did they do that? Their energy is there to pass on to us so that we can use them as a resource to gain that insight how to overcome the obstacles in our life. And now we're gonna feel all of the excluded ones coming in, taking their place. All those that our family affected and all those that affected our family, everyone is coming in to take their place. And we are remembering thousands and thousands of meetings, thousands of thousands of encounters for people to come together, however they did, to pass life through them. So we could be here today and embrace the awesomeness of our soul, embrace the awesomeness of who we are. Whether we feel it or we don't, just bring it in. In this moment, you don't have to feel it. You just set the intention to bring it in and feel the support because those people behind us had to do so much more than we have to do today just to survive. And we have to embrace that and know that we come from a long line of humanity. Now just feel that. Feel it strong. Feel it vibrating through your body. And take another deep breath. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. Mm, wow. Thank you. And just to say that this is a meditation you can do anytime with yourself. You don't need to have somebody. You can record it and do it with your own voice. But it's always really good because we're connecting to what is so much bigger than ourselves when we feel that we're alone because we are never alone, ever. No, and just to have that, that reassurance through the breathing is is really such a powerful gift thank you so much oh you're welcome so just to recap make sure i got the all the all the people so first breath is self right second breath is mother energy or mother third breath is father and father energy and then the last breath is all the other ancestors right right beautiful right <sighs> Wow, <laughs> I'm in such a Zen place right now. <laughs> yeah, it's a little hard to go on now. <laughs> I know, I know, and that's and that's the thing because when you get when you put the guard down and you're in that Zen place, then the when you're talking to yourself, you can actually access those things that are the things that you want to heal. Right? We don't want to call them traumas. We want to say like emotions or situations or feelings that we really aren't sure of how to deal with. So this is a good place to start because we're calm. We're not in the crisis, flight or flight, fright or flight. We're not in the, I have to fix this, I have to fix this, I have to fix this. Yeah, we're like, okay, I'm Just calm. And we can actually, is. right, we can actually start to see the situation a little detached and, and step back, okay, what's really happening? And then we can be a little more mindful about how we react instead of having a crisis moment all the time. Mm, love it. And so this is what um, 
what part of this, um, is it a course that you're developing or a, or a coaching package as well, right? So I have both. I'm working on, um, um, it's kind of like uh, some sessions, a Zoom session in a group, uh, from, in a group um, venue um, mm -hmm. where we have like six sessions. So it really, we found that 40 days is really an incredible healing. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it, it's an incredible healing tool for us because it gives us that 40 days of really being committed to something. You know, like when they talk about um, uh, uh, doing a, a, a detox cleanse or, or, or uh, things like that. So 40 days is really like, you know, 21 days is when you create a habit, but 40 days is when you really clear. So what I've done is I've put together um, for a group online, a 40 day, um, six sessions, but I also do the coaching and it's working as finding yourself and finding your place because a lot of us really don't know who we are ourselves. before you can be anything for anyone else before we can really know what our goals and our dreams are. We need to know who we are and we need to find our place in our system. So if we find our place in our family and we take our place, then we're open to getting those assistances and, and energies from the past because we're standing where we belong. We're not standing in the place of our parent, trying to be bigger than our parent, trying to take care of them because we know better, right? We can take care of them from the place of the daughter or the son we don't have to take care of them from the place of their parent. We can share with them, but stay in our place so that we can be free to find ourselves. So the program is about finding us and where those traumas happen and connecting to our inner child and realizing how awesome we are because when someone's depressed, they feel alone and abandoned. Okay. But that abandonment might be from something that happened in their childhood that never was resolved. And, you know, in trauma, it's called a freeze, right? So we are frozen in that moment. A lot of young women are frozen at 17, 18, or 19 because they had, you know, a lot of things happen to young women when we're teenagers just in high school, right? So a lot of the immature behaviors that we have that we can't release or the shopping to fill a hole, that's from something then. So we go back to that and say, what is it that our mind can't remember because our body does and access that and then make it a safe place, right? Tools to feeling safe, tools to releasing abandonment, tools to finding who we are because everybody's talking about, okay, where are you? Who are you? But if you don't want to acknowledge that life came from your parents, you, you, you're not going to find you, whether you like them or you don't forget the emotions, forget the baggage, just be grateful for life. Your mom carried you. She gave you life. She birthed you, whether it was by cesarean or natural birth, he gave you space in her body. How we feel about her nagging or, or you know, loving us or over loving us or strangling or suffocating us, doesn't matter. We go back to just saying thank you for life. She gave a place yes. for us. She gave us a place. And her body, you know, she changed. It wasn't, it wasn't always easy, right? The same for our father. Our father gave us life. And that's all we need to look at. We need to just be grateful for life. Ooh. Very well said. Yeah, that's, that's one thing I've noticed, you know, so often parents are a trigger right. <laughs> in and of themselves. 
And so when we've done some of these similar types of exercises in the past of, you know, think about your mother, your father, and then it brings up all those frozen uh, moments. And it's so it's beautiful that we can look past the perfectly imperfect parts of our parents and just to recognize, yeah, they gave us life. Right. Right. And that's where we can embrace the awesomeness because if we can just see how it wasn't so easy to pass life on. And now we know like we have hospitals and even in the hospital, sometimes, you know, it's not easy for a woman to give birth, even in today's um, environment. But a hundred years ago, 200 years ago, that wasn't the case, right? How many mothers died in childbirth because there was not adequate medical care, right? Mm -hmm. So how many fathers died because they were working so hard to support their family? So we have to see both sides and, and just embrace the awesomeness of life and just be grateful for that. And when we can do that, then we can address the issues that are giving us a lit that are taking us a little out of balance in this life. Yes, which they you know, where there certainly are <laughs> issues uh, trying to take us out of balance. Right. Yeah. And, and so if if we are if we're home, right, and say we are we don't have a partner, we're not married, right? We're just I by ourselves. So this this pandemic has brought up feelings of isolation and being alone, feeling disconnected. But if we can start to connect to our family, to our ancestors, to our parents, then we can feel that strength and tap into the resources to overcome that and understand that maybe this is triggering a memory of when we were a kid and our parents went away on a trip and left us with maybe our grandparents or an aunt and uncle or babysitter and we felt abandoned. And it doesn't matter if that was a child feeling it, it's a perception yeah. and that's what we have to deal with. The perception creates an emotion which creates an imprint in our body. Yeah, and for that child, that was that was the real reality. Right. That was what they believed. Right. Until we can find a way through some of these types of exercises to go <coughs> back. Bless you. Thank you. And and look at that same situation from from the different perspective. Right. From the eyes of the the adult and help kind of blend the two together. Right. Right. I love it. Right. And a lot of times the traumas are so great that we've kind of blocked them out. But um, so we don't remember them, but then there's a symptom in the body. And when we yeah. start to work with the person on the symptom in the body, then the memory of the situ of the instance starts to come up. And that's where the work comes in of doing the coaching and doing the program is feeling safe, right? So, so then there's an exercise when, when you feel anxious about something, you tap your collarbone, right? And you just tap with your fingers and you go, I'm safe. Uh, yeah, this, like moment, I'm safe. In this moment, I'm safe. In this moment. Yeah. I'm safe. And you bring yourself to this moment, which creates in the next 60 seconds, the next moment and the next moment. So you're not in that um, behind trauma and you're not in the forward trauma that you're anticipating from the anxiousness. You're taking yourself to this moment so you can calm your body so that your body doesn't continue to create those emotional toxins or or those chemical reactions, you know, the adrenaline, the cortisol, the, you know, just I'm safe. I'm safe. I'm safe with myself. I'm safe. Yeah. That's a really good point in that, you know, especially when we're not feeling well or we're in that you know, the isolation that we've all felt in one way or another this past year. 
is is just to remind ourselves that we're yeah. not, we are safe and we are not alone. Right. And and that's um that's a technique that Eckhart Tolle uses a lot to be in the present moment. Yes. Because what we do is we create these scenarios in our mind and we've already created like their reaction, our reaction and an outcome when it hasn't even happened yet. And so this helps you helps bring you back to the moment. Okay, I'm safe. It hasn't happened yet, you know, and bring yourself back to a little more balance and calm. And it also makes me think of the fact that when, when we're able to comfort ourselves or when we're able to make soul connections with ancestors that can comfort us or be there for us, um, there's a there's a hormone that's released when when we give birth um what is that hormone that <laughs> makes the uterus contract relief <laughs> yeah that <laughs> but there's a specific name um can either of you think of it it's not dopamine no i think it's something else but I, here's what i'm getting at is that um we we are social creatures we are designed to be with other people and so let's just take the the scenario that there's a crisis in your life and you have a you know a tiger that's about to eat you and you've run away or you've either fought the tiger off and now the that adrenaline rush is gone and you have this need to tell a friend this extraordinary experience that you had and in telling that story to a friend or a loved one, you get that release because not only are you expressing, but you're also that, that friend or that loved one is comforting you. Mm -hmm. And that exchange helps getting you out of fight or flight, getting back into, you know, the parasympathetic nervous system being calm and being able to rest and digest. So, so what I'm hearing you saying with connecting to our ancestors, connecting to ourself, tapping, using the techniques of tapping, reminding ourselves that we're safe, we're in essence doing that same thing where we're able to comfort ourselves, especially in this time of isolation where we don't have that friend that you can, you know, just <laughs> fall apart with and, and that she or he could say, it's okay, you're safe now. <laughs> yes, that's true. That's yes. true. Yeah. So it gives us tools. And, and that's, um, and that's why the, the group or the coaching is so important, because you're getting that nurturing of your soul. And you're getting that ability to share that but you're also getting tools to find more balance and to be able to process it in a different way. So yes, I agree with you 100%. Cool. And on the on the side note, the hormone is oxytocin. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I had to ask Google. <laughs> thank you. I probably yeah, won't oxytocin. forget that again. Say that. Yeah. I won't forget that now. <laughs> oxytocin. oxytocin. Yeah. Which is cool because that reminds me of oxygen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That makes us all go. Well, this is really cool. So what? Oh, there's there's just so much more we could talk about <laughs> these conversations. So it's I I think uh, in today's world well in any world really when but more more and more today we are finding ourselves in spaces where we are less and less around people either through the pandemic or just you know more people are living alone whatever and it's really really important to remember that we come from a place in a system and whether we are currently interacting with that system it's still part of us and it's so important to honor and respect that system 
our systems and in our in our own progression yeah any thoughts i i'd say more than respect the system is to feel a part of the system because we can respect the system at, and be out here out you know a distant right but to respect the system and to remember what what when somebody told me this, it, it just went so far. And it was like, wow, Do you know, like we, we take for granted that it was our parents and our grandparents, right? But when you start to think of how many people, like it, I think it was also in the movie um, Wrinkle in Time, Ooh. where she said the same thing, right? It, it's that yeah. wrinkle in time that if that wrinkle hadn't happened, and then you just go, wow, right? Yeah. You go, wow. People left countries. People went halfway across the world and met each other, right? And if you start to look, look at your family history, right? And you just do a little bit of, of family tree, right? Just a little bit. And you say, okay, like a lot of people, um, Say we, we just take South America, right? And how many Europeans left and went to South America after war, after famine, after whatever, and they left their family and went to another, but knowing no one, not knowing how they would survive, just looking for a better life and then finding a spouse or just having an affair and creating a child. But, you know, just like when you look at um, the South Pacific, right? And, this, and the ships that came and mingled with the natives and then left, right? What if that person, what if that man hadn't been on the ship, yeah. right? Just the awesomeness of the universe and how it always has our back, even when we don't realize it or feel it, but there's always a bigger purpose. And when we connect to ourself and find uh, who we are, who we really are, then we can really tap into that. And I think we're so much more than this body. You know, we're so much more than our face and the color of our hair and how we dress and where we live. But if we can get beyond that, and get into the deepness of us. And I think that the pandemic has given us, even in the worst cases scenarios, right? Even in the worst of times, given us that, okay, we are our custodians. We have to take care of ourselves. How do we do that? How do we survive? Yeah. But survive in thriving, not surviving in desperation. How do we do that? And so now people are searching for those answers because the, the world has brought us out of that running. I mean, how many kids had these incredible, incredible schedules, right? They were so ridiculous so overly, schedules. yeah, yeah, school and then language and then tutoring and then sports and then, uh, and now it's all of a sudden, that lesson. nothing, right? Now all of a sudden we have to be with our kids at home. And by all means, I'm not discounting the fact of how difficult that is, <laughs> but we're seeing like, who are we and who are we bringing up? And how are we training them or sharing with them, not training them, but sharing them, sharing with them how to live in this world? Yeah. Right. And like our animals, they're not used to us being home. Now they're going to have separation anxiety when we go back to work. Right. How are we dealing? We didn't realize that, you know, they ate all day long or they ate in the morning. You know, it's just what we are seeing, how we see it and how we process it. The world is never going to go back to the way it was. In my view, we're going to have a new normal. How are we going to walk through that new normal? Okay. What we were isn't going to come back. 
but there's a new and exciting opportunity to embrace parts of us that we haven't accessed and to be a whole person, right? Yes. When, and, and presenting ourselves to the world as a whole person. So when we meet someone, when you know a young woman is meeting a young man, she's all there in her authenticity and he's there and they're not you know on the phone and 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 thinking about the next opportunity and you're not good enough but what can i get what can i share in this in this encounter and maybe the world doesn't look the way we thought it should and maybe that partner or that encounter isn't going to have that same face or look the same on the outside, but we're gonna feel their energy. And maybe that's the one, and we would have missed that one if we were looking for the outer and not looking on the inner. Beautiful. Yeah, that was that was very, very intense. Lots to think about there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so, um, Wendy and Zella, you have my information. Um, you know, um, the first uh, 15 minute call is uh, a consultation, it's free. So anybody can call and we can have a consultation to see where it is that they wanna heal. I'm available. Um, it, it's about the healing. And Wendy knows me for a long time, Zella, you just met me, but it's about the healing because we're here, we're all, healing each other as we heal ourselves. Yeah, if you think about it, that is the true purpose of our existence and our soul. Right. To heal our soul so that we can be whole. Right. Well, cool. Well, we will definitely uh, share the contact information on the, our website at indigotent.life. And we hope to keep on healing. Great. Thank you so much, Sophie, for being with us today. So yeah. I would just like to close with, um, with just uh, a little something for anyone who's listening. To take your right hand and put it over your heart and then put your left hand over that. So you kind of like got both hands on your heart and just take in a deep breath and just connect to the energies that you've been feeling by listening to this podcast and know that the universe has your back and you are never alone. And whatever belief system you have, whatever it is, they all come down to the same point that you're never alone. Never alone. So thank you for the honor of participating in your um, tent and I'm truly <laughs> blessed to have this opportunity to share thank you so much oh we're we're so grateful that you took time to be with us today and and share some of your wisdom thank you so that thank we you. can be better souls yes thank you thank you again all right all right and join us next time in the tent dear listeners when we have another soulful encounter with our higher self. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. We hope you've been uplifted by this episode. Please help us uplift others by sharing, subscribing, and reviewing our show. Join in on the conversation by adding your insights and transformations in the comments section. See you next time.